Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Clare from the Rediscovery Centre and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you around and I'm going to show you how, to, how you can do a bug hunt and look at biodiversity and mini bees in your garden or maybe in your local park when you're out for a walk as well. So you just need a very few simple things that you'll have around the house anyway. Get a spoon, but make sure you check with your mom or dad or guardian. Uh, make sure it's not one that's going to be used for people eating their cereal. It would be very tasty. So just keep that for bug hunting. Then you can use a variety of different containers and things like that. Ones like this tin tray or yogurt pots or ones with lids. If you're using anything with a lid, make sure you put air holes in it and maybe ask a grown up to help you with this bit as well. Make sure you've got air holes, otherwise the animals won't be able to breathe definitely not what we want um other things you can use then are things like this i've actually made my own bug viewer just using a milk carton i cut out a little flap at the top here put some plastic over it and taped it in and this is a little opening system here so we can put the bugs in and then we can view them as they go around their little lives as well so you want to make sure you've got air holes in here as well. So I've got quite big holes in here. Don't put anything in that's going to fly around because it might fly out on you. And you don't want to keep your bugs for too long. 20 minutes or half an hour is probably enough. Get a really good look at them and then release them back into the garden where they were. Okay. Another thing that's really useful to use is something like an old white towel or an old pillowcase or something like that. Because we're going to be using this to actually um, collect some insects that are going to come off trees and plants. So I'm going to put that over my shoulder and we're going to use that in a few minutes. So what I'm going to start with doing is getting a bug, uh, one of the bug pots and my spoon as well. We're going to be really gentle lifting up the creatures and putting them in here. So the spoon, that's why the spoon's really useful. So we're not going to hurt any of the animals. Another thing, if you have it at home, and it might be really useful as well, is something like a magnifying glass. So you can see up close, how many legs does a creature have? How many eyes? How is it moving around? And things like that as well. It can be really, really good to have a look at with that. So let's go on a bug hunt. So some really good places to hunt for bugs are under things. A lot of insects are actually hiding, so no predators are going to come, come along and eat them. So if you'd like to come over with me this way, I think I have a suspicion where some creatures might be. So here I've got a little stone wall right beside some plants. So I might get some uh, animals that are actually going to be in here. They might feed in some of the plants here, might feed in some of the dead materials, but they want to be hiding away. So let's have a look. Very carefully going to lift up the stone and have a look. And we're in luck. Right here, we've got some amazing wood lice. And do you know that wood lice actually breathe through their legs? They don't have lungs like us, which is really weird. So you want to be really, really careful with your creatures. And sometimes you just got to be a little bit fast as well. So here we go. My little guy. Very gently. This guy doesn't want to come. No. So you got to be really gentle. Make sure you don't damage him as well. And you can see he's actually feeling his way around using those antenna, which is amazing. Breathing through his legs. And he's more closely related to crabs than he is to any other insect in your garden, which is pretty amazing. So you can have a really, really good look at him. With clear pots like this, you can actually lift it upside down and you can have a look at the underside of him as well. So he's really lightly coloured underneath and he's really dark coloured on top. And why do we think that might be? Camouflage, yeah. So I'm going to gently tip this guy back. And when you're putting, you always need to put things back as well so your creatures are nice and safe too. So there's another little baby one there. And he's stopping because he can see my finger. Yeah. So we're going to put everything back the way it was as well. So that's a really good place to look for things. Under stones. Another place is to look on the underside of leaves as well. Lots of creatures are going to be hiding away underneath here. So you've got to crouch down. Get really close. Because a lot, a lot of these creatures are really, really small. So let's have a look. And we do. We've got one here. So the, again, this guy is tiny. You can see him there. 
and he is a type of fly. And if you look really closely, which is hard to do, but you'll be able to do this yourself in your garden, you can see he's actually got orange eyes. Again, really, really cool. So we're going to leave him back, make sure the leaf is turned back over so he's nice and happy again. So other really good places to look are actually in the soil. You're going to find creatures like slugs, snails, worms, centipedes. Make sure you're not digging up all the plants in your lovely garden or out in the park. So find a bare patch of soil. Again, crouch down so you can see what's happening. And you can use your spoon or a stick to gently scrape away the soil. Now, a lot of creatures actually like to be down quite deep as well. So it might take a little bit of digging around and digging in the right place as well. And you might find some great worms, some uh, amazing centipedes. And centipedes are actually predators. So they won't eat you because you're too big, but they might eat other creatures as well. So you might want to keep uh, just one or two creatures in each of the pots. And over here, look what we just spotted. This here is an old snail shell. This snail might have been two years old. And if you have a look at the underside of him here, you'll see it's all broken. And the reason was probably that this was dropped by a bird. The bird breaks the shell on the, on the ground and then nibbles out the tasty snail. So when you're putting snails and slugs and things like that back, just make sure you put them in a nice safe place so they won't be seen by birds as well. Very good. Other things that you can do and this would be using your towel or your white sheet, would be to place this under. You might need help of somebody as well. So maybe you could do this as a team. So you want to stick the towel underneath the leaf like this, and then you're going to give it a really good shake. And some creatures are going to fall onto it. So here we've got an amazing little green fly there. And then if you can see, these guys are very, very small, but they're actually green fly or aphids. And you know who eats them? Ladybirds. So again, always make sure you put the creatures back where they were. Just give it a good shake out and they'll land down. And over here, we've got ladybirds. Wow. So you can see we've got so the number of spots tells you the species of the ladybirds, not what age it is. So these are little two spot ladybirds and you can see them there having a great time chatting to each other. It's all about the small world. A lot of things are actually tiny in your garden. So if you're moving across leaves and things like that, we've got a little ant who's actually eating some of the nectar there in behind. And we've got our ladybirds. I'm going to be really careful not to disturb those as well. So ladybirds are just incredible beetles that you find in your garden. And there's lots of different species. Some of them are yellow. Some of them are a little bit black colored. And some of them are the ones that we always associate the red with black spots as well. Super. So let's go and see what else we can have a look at. A lot of the time in your garden as well, you might be growing some plants to eat, some vegetables and fruit and things like that. Those can also be really good places for looking for insects. So here we've got our amazing garden where we're growing some marigolds here that are great for bees and butterflies. We've also got potatoes and onions and lots of other plants. Oftentimes you'll find lots of creatures that live among the soil here. So again, be very careful not to dig up any of the plants you want to go nice and slow have a dig down and oh there we go a teeny tiny little worm so let's have a look he's actually hidden in among among there so you got to be very very focused on what you're looking at so this guy is very very small he's in the corner over there moving around and again when you're putting these back just make sure you put them back very gently don't drop them from a height be like a giant dropping you and your head from a big height wouldn't be good and you want to cover them over again so they're nice and safe and they can continue on with their lives if you find 
bees and wasps. They're again amazing to look at, but don't try and catch them. They get really angry when they're trapped and they could sting you by accident. And it isn't good for them and it's definitely not good for you either. So just watch them. You can get quite close to them as well, but don't make any big sudden movements and just keep really calm around them. And you might get really close and you can even see the pollen that's stuck to their legs as well that they're going to bring back to their hive. So guys, that's just a little bit about biodiversity. There's some amazing things out there. If you have a look on our website, there's a, a wildlife spotter sheet as well. And you can see how many different animals you can find in your garden or on a walk or in your local park or wherever it is as well. So guys, thank you so much. I'm Sarah Clear from the Rediscovery Centre and I'm absolutely delighted and go and find some really cool bugs, share some pictures on our social media or have a look at our website as well, rediscoverycentre.ie. Thank you.